In this video, I'll teach you how to install and use seven custom filters that you will be able to use to QA each of your projects to make sure they are of high quality. During my over 25 years of teaching people how to use Microsoft Project, I've always focused on learning how to create dynamic project schedules. What is a dynamic schedule anyway, you might ask? It's a project schedule that lives and breathes. It's a project schedule that lets you accurately forecast the finish date of your project. That's the date everybody wants to know about. And a dynamic schedule is a project schedule that is much easier to update and maintain. If you don't have a dynamic project schedule, life is going to be harder for you. You won't be able to accurately forecast the finish date of the project. That'll always be in doubt. And it's way more work to update and maintain your project. So, how can you confirm that you do have a dynamic project schedule? Easy! In the comment section down below, you'll find a link to download a Microsoft Project file that includes seven custom task filters that you can use to confirm that you have a high quality schedule that is dynamic. I'd encourage you to pause the video now, go download that Microsoft Project sample file, then come back to the video and learn how to install and use those custom filters. So let's get started. After downloading and saving the sample file that accompanies this video, you'll need to open the sample file. By the way, the name of the sample file is called qafilters.mpp. After you've opened the sample file, then complete the following steps. Click the File tab to display the backstage, and then click the Info tab to display the Info page in the backstage. On the Info page, click the Organizer button to display the Organizer dialog. And in this dialog, click the Filters tab at the top to display the custom and default filters available to you in Microsoft Project. In the list on the right side of the dialog, you'll discover seven custom filters that will help you to perform a QA on each of the projects that you manage. Select all seven of these filters and then click the copy button to copy the custom filters into your global.mpt file which makes them available to every project you manage from this point forward. Then, go ahead and click the Close button to close the dialog. Press the Escape key to exit the backstage. And then you can go ahead and close this sample file. You won't need it again. After adding those custom QA filters to your global.mpt file, you're ready to open your first project and perform a QA on the project using those filters. You can see that I've opened a project called AI for Drone Surveillance, and I'm ready to do the QA. So here's how to do it. Click the View tab to display the View ribbon. In the Data section of the ribbon, click the Filter Pick List button and work your way through all seven of these QA filters. Let's start with the first one, Tasks Are Not Auto-Scheduled. This filter is looking for any task that is manually scheduled. I have recommended for years that you do not use manually scheduled tasks because they are too rigid, too inflexible, and they require too much upkeep 
on the part of the project manager to keep the schedule correct. So if you see any manually scheduled tasks, right click on the task and on the shortcut menu choose switch to auto schedule. Now after you apply that filter, fix the problems, then I recommend you reapply the filter to make sure you don't have any residual problems. If you return a blank task list when you apply the filter, woohoo! That's good news. That means there's no tasks that have that particular problem. So now let's go ahead and look at the second QA filter, which is summary tasks with dependencies. I recommend that you never ever set task dependencies on summary tasks because that can create circular reference errors in your Microsoft Project schedule. A problem best avoided. So since I have two summary tasks that seem to be linked, if you see linked summary tasks like I do, then here's what I recommend you do. Click the filter pick list again, choose no filter, then go to the highlight filter pick list and choose the same one, summary tasks with dependencies. This will allow you to see every task in the project, but the problems are highlighted with the yellow cell background color. So I can see task number 18, is currently linked to task number 22 and both of those are summary tasks. Before you unlink them, however, look at the logic of your project to make sure you know which detail tasks or milestones should be linked to other detail tasks or milestones. Well, in our case, it looks like what we would need is task number 21 should be linked to task number 25. So I'll go ahead and highlight the two summary tasks that are currently linked. I'll break the link, then I'll select number 21, hold down the control key, select number 25, and link them. Now let's go ahead and remove the highlight filter and I'll reapply the original filter summary tasks with dependencies. And look at there, woohoo! Problem solved, a blank task list is returned, which means there's no problems of this type left in the project. Now let's take a look at the third filter. This is detail tasks missing predecessors. It has a companion called detailed tasks missing successors. So let's take a look at both of these. First, detailed tasks missing predecessors. In your project, there will always be one task that will be returned by this filter, and that will be the very first task in your project, which can never have a predecessor because it's the first task. So if you only see one task, you're good. If you see other tasks, then you're going to need to link them with other tasks so that they do have predecessors. I don't have that problem. So let's go look at the fourth filter, detailed tasks missing successors. When you apply this filter, there should always be one task that is returned and that is the final task in your project because the last task can never have a successor. But notice I do have task number 35. It's a milestone task and it's missing a successor. So to solve this problem, I'll use the same technique that I showed you previously. I'll first remove the filter then I'll click the Highlight Filter Pick List button and choose Detailed Tasks Missing Successors. Then as I scroll through, here's task number 35, 
highlighted with the yellow cell background color. It is an unlinked milestone task. It does need to be linked with a successor, and in our case, it would be task 37. So I'll select task 35. I'll also select task 37 using the control key. Then I'll go ahead and link these two tasks. Notice that that does change the schedule of the remainder of the project, which means I didn't have an accurate schedule because of that one dependency that was missing. So this is a very good thing. Now let's remove that filter as a highlight filter. And we'll go back, detailed tasks, missing successors, and look, we only see one task. That is the final task, project complete. So at this point, we're good. We don't have any more problems of that type. All right, let's go ahead and look at the fifth filter, which is tasks with accidental constraints. Now you're probably wondering, well, what is a task with an accidental constraint? In Microsoft Project, if you manually type a start date, Microsoft Project will automatically apply a constraint called start no earlier than. And if you manually type a finish date for a task, Microsoft Project will automatically apply a finish no earlier than constraint. Those are what I call accidental constraints because the software did it without asking your permission. So notice these tasks are all finish no earlier than. Look at that. That means the project manager who created this project probably manually typed both a start date and a finish date, or at a minimum, typed a finish date for each one of these tasks. Those constraints need to be removed. So here's how to do it. If this filter returns any tasks, highlight the block of tasks, right-click anywhere in the selected block, and choose the information item on the shortcut menu. Microsoft Project will display the multiple task information dialog. In the dialog, click the Advanced tab, then go to the Constraint Type Pick List button and choose the default constraint, which is called As Soon As Possible. You don't need to do anything else. Then go ahead and click the OK button. Looks like the constraints are gone because the indicators column is now clear. So let's go ahead and test and make sure we've solved the problem. I'll reapply the filter. There we go. A blank list is returned. No problems remain of that particular type. Let's go ahead and look at the sixth filter. It's called inflexible constraints. An inflexible constraint is any constraint that limits the Microsoft Project scheduling engine from completely scheduling every task in your project. Inflexible constraints include finish no later than, start no later than, must start on, and must finish on. This filter does not actually identify problems that need to be fixed. It's just letting you know that you're building rigidity into your Microsoft Project schedule. So you can see right now that only one task is returned. It's the final milestone called Project Complete. If I float my mouse pointer over the indicators, I can see it has a finish no later than constraint. And the reason for the constraint is documented in the note, customers required drop dead date for project completion. So at this point, I know that I've built some rigidity into this schedule. 
that may or may not be a bad thing. So the filter alerts me to that. No problem that needs to be fixed at this point because I set that constraint intentionally. So let's go ahead and take a look at the last filter. It's called milestones with duration greater than zero days. At this point, you're probably wondering, wait a minute, milestones have a duration of zero days. What's going on here? Well, take a look at these two tasks. In the Gantt chart screen, you can see the milestone symbols out here, which is the black diamonds. But look, one task has a duration of six days, and the other one has a duration of five days. What in the world is going on here? I can tell you, this is a feature that was added to Microsoft Project many years ago, and I wish Microsoft had never added this feature. It actually allows you to mark a task as a milestone when the duration is greater than zero days. I do not recommend using that feature. So let me show you how to disable that feature so that these tasks turn into real Gantt bars. So highlight any tasks that have this problem, right click anywhere in the selected block, and then choose the information item on the shortcut menu. In the multiple task information dialog, click the advanced tab to display the advanced page. In the lower left corner of the dialog, you'll find a check box called Mark Task as Milestone. Clear that checkbox so the background is just white. Make sure there's no check mark in that checkbox and then click the OK button. There, now the tasks are displayed as Gantt bars, which is what we'd want to see. When they're displayed as milestone symbols, all that does is add confusion to understanding your project. So let's go ahead and look at the filter again just to make sure we've solved our problems. Woohoo! Look at that! A blank task list means no more problems of that type. So at this point, after you've fixed all of your problems with your project using those seven QA custom filters, I'd say your project is ready for baselining and to go to the execution stage of the project. So now you know how to install and use those seven custom filters to make sure that you have a high quality dynamic project schedule. I hope you'll start using those filters right away on any project you're currently managing. And I hope you'll use them on every new project you create from this point forward. If you're new to this YouTube channel, I sure hope you'll subscribe. And if you like this video, please give it a like. If you have any questions, be sure and add your questions in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you in my next video.